What does it all mean? What does it all mean? What does it all mean? And I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we will be talking about resultant prism. This is certainly not a subject I get bombarded with questions about, but I have been getting a steady trickle of questions lately, so I thought it might be a good time to revisit it. The questions I've been getting all boil down to the same thing. They ask, can you help me understand the different language and the different ways that people write result in prism? And to that I can say, oh, well, um, I'll sure give it a try. Now, why is that such a difficult thing to do? Well, just a quick look around and you will find the terms resultant, lab notation, resolving, 180 degree notation, 360 degree notation and prescriber's notation all used to cover the same concept. Let's see if we can help sort it all out. Do remember that you already have another video covering result in PRISM over on the YouTube channel. And remember that most PRISM is written with two directions and two powers, not like those simple examples that we always see for Prentice's formula. You know, 180, 90, one base direction, one power. So you might want to pay attention here. Resultant. Resultant prism looks like one of these examples. And I think we write it that way because it's comfortable for us. It's, uh, it uses language and symbols and numbers that we're familiar with. No matter what, it requires conversion. It, it, it doesn't give you enough information to make a lens and it doesn't give you enough information to know where in the lens meter that prism displacement should be, the target, uh, to know if the job was made right or not. So it always requires conversion of some kind. We can plot it with or without math. One of the case examples will show you how to do that. As I say, it's very common, it's not going anywhere, but it still requires the use of the 360 notation chart. We are talking in this case about resultant prism notation, which is this. If I suddenly found myself working with this stuff every day in order to make sure that I was doing a good job, I would probably pull together a three ring notebook, make a bunch of these charts, give myself notation notes, give myself a copy of each of the formulas with a couple of examples so I know what I was doing. I would probably take one of these charts and make it a right and one of them a left. I would probably highlight what I needed and get rid of what I didn't for these. Anything that it took in order to make sure that I was doing my job correctly. Of course, that's just me. As I've mentioned before, resultant prism gives you a lot, but not enough to tell where this should appear in the lens meter. There are two ways to work this in order to do that. Let's take a look at those. This says that I have a right lens, base up, base in. Right lens, base up, base in. Here, it's gonna be in this quadrant, which is quadrant one. And it says I have three up. Now the result of three up and five in is not eight. It is a combination of the two, which falls about there. If you took a progressive lens and you put the prism reference point right there, for this job to check out correctly, you would want your lens meter target right there. And I'd say if you had that, you'd be good. This job would pass for a right lens with three diopters base up and five diopters base in. Now we can also check that using math. So if you want to do that, we can use our formula. 
h squared plus v squared. Uh, let's see, what do we have? We have 3. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared, 25. 25 plus 9 is 34. Squared is 5.8. It says we should have 5.8 diopters. And if we look here, there's my 6 ring. And lo and behold, look at that. It's right there, Shy. You can just see that little tiny piece of the 6. So we are at exactly 5.8. The resultant prism of the combination of these two gives us that. Now, at what degree on our grid of 360 should this appear? That we need to use our second part of that formula. That is V divided by H, V being 3 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.6 versus the tangent gives us 30.9 or 31. Here's 30, there's 31, and sure enough, we ran that down through there. We'd be just shy, and everything adds up. We can do it both by plotting it using the 360 degree chart, or we can do our math, or we can do both to be absolutely sure. So that is how you would take your resultant prism notation and know where it should appear in the lens meter. 360 degree notation uses the chart. There it is, 360 grid to determine prism direction and axis. There is an example of prism written in 360 degree notation. Notice that the degrees fall outside that normal zero to 180 that we're familiar with. It gives you everything that you actually need. You could make a lens from using 360 notation. It tells you exactly where in the lens meter that prism should displace the target to, so you know you've got the right thing. I say it can be decoded. I'm giving you an example of that. It's one of the case studies. Let's say you took a progressive lens, you put it on the prism reference point, you see where the target is, you take that from the target in the 360 notation, you can work the theory backwards and you can end up writing it in resultant in case you needed to do that. That's one of the examples we'll cover because that is one of the questions that I got recently. Probably the best way to think about this, uh, I threw this stuff up on social media one time and I had a couple of people come back, you know, this is the only way that anyone should be taught or think about it. I tend to agree, but we will leave that to this side. This is how labs work. Uh, even if you give them this or give them that, they either by hand or using the lab management software system, they change it over to this. And if you think about it, that just makes sense. A lens is not half a lens or 180 degrees. A lens is 360 degrees. And what happens on the top does not necessarily happen on the bottom when we're talking about prism. Let me see if I can make that just a little bit clearer for you. Let's say we had this three down and six out. And let's say we put our lens down there and it's a right lens. We have three down and six out. Here is a three diopter ophthalmic prism. There's my base. Three down would be like that. And then I've got six out, six diopters, six out. That would be a resultant prism amount, because those are both there. Now, it would only appear in this one quadrant. It would not be in one, two, or four. What is happening here, the prism amount, right, three down, six out, would only be here. It would not be mirrored on the opposite side. Hence, 360 degrees not 180 degrees. I have got four diopters at 220. Where is 220? 10, 90, 100, da, 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 da. Is 220 is right there. And what have I got? I have got four diopters. There's one, two, three, four at 220. So I'm right there. So if I took a progressive lens, and I always use a progressive lens as an example because a progressive lens gives you that wonderful prism reference point. So if I put that prism reference point right here, 
for a right lens and my lens meter target appeared here, I'd be in good shape. That lens would have the proper amount of prism in the correct place. Now, the question that I get is what would happen if for some reason I had this, I was neutralizing a pair of glasses for someone. This is what I ended up with. I was confident and that's the amount of prism that was right. How would I write that as resultant if I needed to? Let's just say someone insisted that I write it that way. Well, there's a way to do that. And let's figure out how that is done. We are here, right there. Let's make that red instead. Let it sit out a little bit. There we go, beautiful. All right, and we need to highlight this axis and this axis. We know we're down in this quadrant here, quadrant three. Right, we've got a 90 degree angle here, we know that. We can then use our Pythagorean theorem and we can come out here like so. Now, to take this and turn it into resultant prism, again, that's the question that I got, we need to plug in the numbers into this formula. Our power, four, multiplied times the sine of our angle. What angle? The angle between our axes and our position, which just happens to be, let's figure that out, 220 minus 180 gives us 40. There's our 40. And it tells us that we need the sine of that. The sine of 40 is 0 0.642 multiplied times our 4 gives us 2.57 or 2.6 diopters of prism base down. Now we need to solve for both of those. Let's clear that. And because we have our 90 degree angle, if we can still use our 40 and use instead the cosine. So we have our power, we have our 40 cosine times four is 3.06 or to 3.1. So in order to take that, we knew we were right there and write it as a resultant, we would end up with 2.6 diopters base down and 3.1 diopters base out. Right lens, right lens, down and out. And that was how you would solve for that. 180 notation. There is an example of 180 degree notation. Uh, you're given a quadrant address, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, and a degree between zero and 180, but that doesn't really tell you anything until you look at your quadrant, and then you may need to add or subtract 180, and we'll go over that in just a second. I threw this up on social media. I had one person get back to me. They checked with their fresh out of school OD, and she was told that they are taught this in optometry school. It combines the worst of resultant and the best of 360, I guess. Uh, it's a little chunk of each of these. The thing that bothers me about 180 is that you still need to know 360 in order to work with 180, so why don't we just stick with 360? I don't know. I will show you how this works in comparison to this. We're gonna look at all four of these examples. Notice that all four examples fall between zero and 180 degrees. However, only one of these four is actually going to end up at the position noted. As I just mentioned on the whiteboard, every 180 degree notation will include a quadrant address and everything is going to work off of that. For instance, right lens, base down and in. We need to look on our chart and find out where down and in in a right lens. Down is gonna be here somewhere, down and in right lens. 
here, it is going to end up in quadrant four. Where 135, where is 135? 135 is up here. It is not in quadrant four. No. Luckily, the chart tells us what is 180 degrees away from 135, which is 315. So in reality, 5.6, just shy of 6, at 315 degrees, we would actually be looking for our lens meter target to end up right about there. To have a job written in 180 degree notation for a right lens, 5.6 down and in at 135, actually at 315. Let's look at example number two, our dress. Left lens, down and in. Left lens, down and in is here. It's going to be in quadrant three. None of this. No. Hey, what does it say? It says it's at 30 degrees. 30 degrees is up here. No, it's not going to be there. Again, this tells us a reverse of our 30 is 210. It's right there for us. We don't need to do any calculations. And we have got 4.3. 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Just outside of 4 at 210. If I placed a progressive lens with its prism reference point there, left lens, my lens meter target should appear displaced just about there for that lens to have been made right. Example number three, my quadrant address, base up and base out for a right. Right lens up and in, no, base up, OD, up and out. There it is, that's what I need. I need this quadrant. I can ignore all of this. And I says that I'm at 110 degrees. Here's 110 degrees. So this is the one that actually happens to fall where I need it. Up and out, 10 degrees, 5.5, there's five, there's five and a half. This one is about as spot on as you can get. If I put my prism reference point right there, looked in the lens meter, if my target was displaced here, this lens would have been made correctly. Last one. I think you're getting the hang of this now. We've got a left down and out. Down's going to be down here somewhere. Left, down, and out. There we go. We're back in quadrant four again. Says we will be at 155. However, that's not here, is it? Not a chance. All right, 155 is over here. Uh-oh, we're kind of stuck in limbo between 150 and 160. We don't have a clear indicator to come across. So we're somewhere down in here. So we would take one, 155 and add 180 to that, which gives us 335. There's 330, there's 340, there's 335. What do we got? 6.6, 6. there's 6. I'd be just shy of 7. We'd be right about here. If I put my prism reference point right there, looked in the lens meter, and my target was displaced down here, for 6.6, .6, down and out at 155, which is not at 155, it's actually at 335, and I had my target here, I'd be good to go. There is 180 degree notation. Three ways that you may see resultant prism. Resultant looks like that. 360 notation looks like that and 180 notation looks like that. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found that helpful. Please consider trying Laramie K Optical for all your uncut lens needs, and I will see you again 
next week.